Okay, we're back at NAB day two wrap up here inside the cube. This is our flagship telecast, siliconangle.com, silicon.tv. Uh, we're going to wrap up today's segment and we're going to go into afternoon presentations that Intel Studio Experience has a slew of, uh, of demos. If you're here at uh, NAB or you're watching on Twitter, tweet uh, Intel Studio and come by. I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org and John, we've We've heard, we've seen the themes come together. We heard uh, Eric Jackson talk, talk about evolution today. You know, he's a consumer of all these cool technologies and, and, and basically seeing evolutionary technologies and things like cameras and other, you know, whiz-bang toys. And, uh, but, but not a shock, you know, not a shock and awe to him. Um, it's relatively shocking and awing to me as a, someone who's relatively new to NAB, but, you know, for a practitioner like, like Eric, not so much. And we heard Tom Joyce talk about you know, storage, how it's different in this industry, and, and, and tape, and then um, Autodesk with those, some really great innovations and um, yeah, a lot I mean, of other great guests today. I mean, obviously the theme today for me was the software matters, and then, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of innovation with software. You know, Autodesk, we heard from Adobe yesterday, we heard from uh, Magix. So, you know, software really is, to me, the proxy for the innovation in the uh, core hardware. Um, because you can see the benefits, and that's where the applications really shine. Uh, the other thing that um, is clearly come out here is that Thunderbolt um, is not integrated into HP. I thought that was pretty interesting that uh, it's not fully yet into their high-end workstations. You get a lot of Mac-like competition, given the whole emphasis of multi-platform, so I think that's a big deal. Well, um, okay, I wonder if I could ask you about that, John. Sure. I mean, you, you were, I think, pretty clear, and at least your, I inferred from your comments that you, you'd think that would be a mistake if HP didn't adopt Thunderbolt. I think, eight, I think it's an HP mistake if they don't put Thunderbolt into the machines. It's, it's just clearly, I mean, again, I have to look at the actual performance. Is it, is it reliable? It, obviously, it's a spec, it pretty is reliable, so I'm assuming it, it will be reliable. But at those speeds, it's clearly a superior product, and if you're going to have a high-end workstation, you've got to have the most superior products. I just think from an HP standpoint, it's just the big battleship of HP. I've got to redesign the motherboard, I've got to have the connectors, negotiated price with Intel. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like they're following in, Apple, Apple's involved. right? So, but well, I, they but should follow Apple. I mean, Apple's but, stock but, price is uh, well, exactly. a lot higher than I mean, HP. They've got to get so, over that, right? So, no, but but the thing is, it's about Mac competition. Mac had a lot of lot of um, success at the high end of the creative, general purpose creative market. But you know, you had workstations uh, owning the higher higher end of of graphics and rendering. And I think the big epiphany here is that um, Mac basically is a Unix workstation. So. What you have here, HP, and now you see with Dell, but mainly HP, and they're Unix guys. So I think HP's smart to move into that workstation business, go head to head with Apple and say, hey, we have workstations too, and make the, the fastest car they possibly can for these app, just, app drivers. It's just amazing to see how much love you know, Apple's getting inside of the Intel booth. You know, 10 years ago, you know, that wasn't the case. <laughs> Apple made a major transition to when, Intel. When is someone and, at HP and Dell and just going to give us laptops that so we can get, <laughs> our tactics not working by having our Macs on the, on the desk here, Dave. Um, <laughs> No, but seriously, it's fun to watch. I think I'm really bullish on the tech companies. I think they all get the impact of the, the media and how they're enabling the massive change. We heard about SSD, how that's changed the game. I mean, you can see on the face of the Autodesk uh, executive how, how impactful the performance has been for his job, his company, yeah. and ultimately his customers. I think the other thing that, um, that's a key point out of today is the democratization of media. And it's kind of cliche to say the democratization of media, but the reality is, um, the tools are out there. There's a zillion different lights, there's different, different cameras. They're all got the same cars. I think Eric talked about the cars, GM, Ford, pick your, pick your general car, and then you got the high end, you got mid range. So you have all the tools out there. To me, democratization puts the tools in the hands of everybody. That's individual corporations. That's also broadcasters and the people. And so software will make it all happen. So to me, um, my walk away here is looking at the software innovations and that's going to be my action item this afternoon is to go out on the show floor and look at the actual software, composite software, and see if I can't get a hand on some demo units. So the tech rally today, um, IBM and, <laughs> and HP are leading it, Apple bounced back today, um, you know, so some good things going on in tech and, and um, Zynga actually told the street that it's going to start acquiring companies. So Zynga's down significantly, down 5%. And so Zynga's got, as you know, almost $2 billion in cash. So I mean, what do you think about that? Zynga going to be more acquisitive? Well, I think it's a sign that they don't have any confidence in their product leadership. So obviously anyone who knows about Zynga and played Farmville knows that's, that's not a, gonna, that horse is not going to stay around for a while. I mean, you know, it used to be cool to play Farmville and all those games, but now you look like a kind of a, you know, 
Why are you, you, play why, why you, are you still playing Farmville? You don't play Words with Friends? You know? Well, Words with <laughs> Friends is just a different experience. So I think the gaming <laughs> business is all about experience. It's like, it's like a nightclub. It's always good, and then all of a sudden it gets stale, and then people move on to something else. So, so good move going yeah, up? of course. Start think, acquiring companies? I, think, I, I, I thought think, you'd agree uh, with it. OMG but. Pop was an amazing deal yeah. for Zynga. Right. They paid $189 million. I think that's the number I heard. Some people are reporting about $200 million for that deal. And clearly, that was a fantastic deal. Um, so they paid a uh, very dis low price relative to what they're getting in terms of value, in terms of users, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So how, how about it? Zynga's got a $7 billion market cap. Instagram, one-seventh the value of Zynga. That's well, amazing. Instagram is a fluke. I think they're a lottery ticket, really, ultimately, in my opinion. Um, but I think it just goes to show you that the way the market's going is if you put out good software and it hits, the, hits that thermal, hits that growth, uh, you can have that massive uh, tsunami. And I think ultimately, in order for them to actually compete, they would have done have to do a monster round of finance, even though they raised $50 million. They still got to hire the engineers and do all that work. And ultimately, I think they're looking at a road saying, hey, I'll take that offer any day of the week. I, I, would, I think they would have taken a half a billion dollars easily. So again, it's very bubblish um, in the sense of, uh, of, the, of the markets, but that's Silicon Valley. Well, and like I say, so Tech Rally today, IBM HP, IBM's pushing its, its 52 week high, not quite there, but IBM's market cap's now 239 billion, John. HP, by contrast, which is a larger company, has a market cap of under $50 billion now. <laughs> so lower than EMC slash VMware. Um, it's certainly significantly lower than SAP. So that's something that we've been watching. Um, pretty extensively. Now the other news on, on the page is siliconangle.com. Top story today right now is Oracle execs thought Sun acquisition was a mistake. Um, I thought that's a very interesting story that's coming out. Uh, so this is on Silicon Angle. Silicon I got to read that story. Um, we got some big data stories. Uh, Nisera had a great article in Wired Magazine around the whole OpenStack buzz. They're really a software uh, networking company and innovating uh, like a Cisco type environment for in software. So I think we still haven't even seen the embedded killer software yet in some of the networking side of this. I think Thunderbolt is an absolute telegraph move around where the networking business has to go, has to hit the performance levels that meets video. Uh, and then just a lot of other tech news and IT news going on at SiliconANGLE uh, around OpenStack, but ultimately, you know, uh, you know earnings are happening. Uh, Hulu's got an article in the New York Times, uh, adds original programming. So, again, back to here. Content uh, is the key landscape change here, and so um, if you're in the content business, it's a big deal. Yeah, so that's I'm interesting. I'm, I'm reading the uh, Melissa's article on SiliconANGLE. Evidently, as part of the filing, some of the Oracle execs said that they thought this was a mistake, which is, um, which is different than what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, we'll have so to dig okay. into that a little deeper. Uh, final thoughts, Dave, for day two here. We had some pretty good interviews. I, uh, I Thunderbolt was interesting. I, um, Autodesk was, I thought, my favorite. I really liked yeah. the special effects, and uh, I can't wait to see the demo of the thousand people marching in the Intel logo. I think that's going to be pretty cool. For me, I think you know, you've underscored it, the, the whole democratization of the media business and the tools that are coming into the hands of the masses and uh, a lot enabling people like us. We talked about Leo Laporte broadcasting, you know, really you know, creating this new form of media. It reminds us of uh, you know, cable back in the late 1970s. You know? and, um, so we're seeing the tools come down in cost. The economics are so compelling and it's just the enabling and a, a huge number of people to, to get creative and provide production values that are much more consistent with what you would typically yeah. see at high-end studios. And for the folks out there who don't know SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, we're going to be launching a 24-7 tech network this quarter. Uh, you'll see 24-7 programming from SiliconAngle. We have the Cube desk here uh, doing uh, morning and evening uh, um, news wrap-ups and as well as Cube specials, as well as program specials, NAB special, uh, big data special, um, disruption of media special. So, you know, we're going to go out there and compete, I guess, with the CNBCs of the world, Dave, and go out and, and create a tech programming channel to serve the audience, and, and they are out there on social media. So, you know, if we can get that going, that'd be a goal of ours this quarter. You'll take a look on that, keep an eye on that. Um, other news here, Dave, that you're excited about? Well, I think I'm, I want to go by, by uh, uh, and see that new camera. You know, the, that's <laughs> you, you have a 7D, right? Yeah, I have a 7D, and, uh, yep. And so, uh, 
It looks like it's you know, going to get outdated shortly here. So, <laughs> All right, well, that's a wrap from uh, day two at uh, NAB with Silicon Angles The Cube. We are headlining Intel's uh, studio experience with all great interviews from people here showing off their amazing solutions inside the booth. And from the folks out, out uh, watching, uh, there's a whole afternoon sessions of folks doing demos on this amazing screen behind us. It's a technology called Sight Deck. Um, we call it the Epiphany Wall. Uh, fantastic. Great setup here by Intel, and I want to say thanks to the Intel team. I want to say thanks to Mark Risen Hopkins, our producer at SiliconAngle.tv, and uh, an amazing stage here, very big presence at NAB, and uh, we'll be following the Pound NAB Show hashtag, and we'll be walking the floors. And I'll see if you want to find us on Twitter, you will. And uh, I want Dave to say thanks for day two. It's been great. Yeah, thank you, John. Appreciate uh, the collaboration with SiliconANGLE. Okay. It's always All a right. pleasure. And uh, well, that's a wrap-up for us here at theCUBE at NAB, and we'll see you tomorrow.